Let us give him all the honor and all the glory. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. A pleasant good morning to each and every one. Those online, thank you for viewing. Good morning and welcome. Welcome, everyone. Hallelujah. We just want to give God praise this morning. Amen. Father God, we give you thanks. We give you praise for this time that we can come into your presence. We thank you, Lord, that we can worship. We thank you, Lord, that we can lift up your name. Father, we thank you, oh God, that we are yet alive. We are well. We are in our right mindset, God. And Father, we can lift up your name in spite of what is around us, in spite of, oh God, what is happening, in spite of what the enemy is trying. Father God, we just give you praise. We give you thanks. We give you honor. We give you glory. Father, we lift up this service to you this morning, oh God. And I pray, holy God, that you will have your perfect way. I pray, oh God, that you will minister to the worship minister, oh God, to your people in a special way. Touch our pastor this morning. Oh God, as she ministers your word, dear God, give her utterance, dear God. Anoint her fresh, dear God, to speak your words with boldness and with authority in the name of Jesus, that hearts and minds will be liberated in your presence. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, that you will be glorified, that you will be lifted up in Jesus' name. Father, we give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to worship the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We bless your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. I worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul. I worship. Your holy name. So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. I worship His holy name. Thank you. 
Jesus, thank you, Jesus. You are the word at the beginning. 
one with God the Lord most high. Your hidden glory and creation now revealed and you are right. You are the word. You are the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord, most high. Your hidden glory and creation. Now reveal and you are blind. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus, you were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord was Yours is the king. 
kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. Death could not hold you. The veil go before you. You silence the voice of bliss and the praise. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. Jesus, hallelujah. Father, I give you praise. You are the great I am, and you are worthy of all praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I lift up your name. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. The mountain shake before you. The demons run and flee at the mention of your name, King of Majesty. There is no power in hell or oh, any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am. The mountain shake before you. The demons run and flee at the mention of your name, King of Majesty. There is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am. The mountain shake before you. The demons run. Of your name, King of Majesty, 
and shake before you. The demons run and flee at the mention of your name, King of Majesty. There is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am. The mountain shake before you. Demons run and flee at the mention of your great name, King of Majesty. There is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am. Great I am. Great I am. Great I am. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you praise. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. You are holy, God, and there is none like you, Lord. Father, I lift up my hands to you. I lift up my praise to you. Lord, I worship you in spirit. I worship you in truth. Father, I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. Because there is none like you, God. There is none beside you, God. You are almighty, God, and you are worthy of every praise. Hallelujah. Father, I worship you. You are the great I am, and there is none like you, Lord. None that can be compared, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, God Almighty, great I am, who is worthy, none beside thee, God Almighty, great I am, hallelujah. Great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are great and you are greatly to be praised. You are the great God. Hallelujah. You are merciful and you are in control, Lord. Father, so we give you praise today. We worship at your throne, Lord. We worship you, Lord. You are the great I am. You are the great I am. Worthy is your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. At this time, I want to turn right over to our pastor. Praise the name of the Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Pastor. Pastor, your mic is muted. Can you unmute your mic, please? Thank you. This one where All right, 
Still not hearing you. Still not hearing you, Pastor. Well, let's sing the next song now. Huh? Praise the Lord. While well, pastor trying to organize. Thank you. Yes, of course. Thank you. Hallelujah. God is fighting for us. God is on our side. He has overcome. Yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. He's carrying our burdens, covering our shame. He has overcome, yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken, we will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. God is fighting for us, God is on our side. He has overcome, yes, he has overcome. Shaken, we will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. He's carrying our burdens, covering our shame. He has overcome, yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken, we will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. So I will. I will live, I will not die, I will declare. 
fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up this kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, the enemy is defeated, and we will shut it up, shut it up. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up this kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, the enemy is defeated, and we will shut it up, shut it up. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up this kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, the enemy is defeated, and we will shut it up, shut it up. I will live, I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ lies in me, and I am free in Jesus' name. I will live, I will not die. I will declare and lift you high. Christ revealed and I am healed in Jesus' name. God is fighting for us. God is on our side. He has overcome, yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. He's carrying our burdens, covering our shame. He has overcome, yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken, we will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. So I will live, I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ. I will live, I will not die, I will declare and lift you high. Christ revealed and I am healed in Jesus' name. So I will live, I will not die, the resurrection power of Christ, my life's in Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, very pleasant good morning to each and every one of you, brethren. I greet you this morning in the name of the living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To those of you that are out there, on Facebook, and all of you who have joined in on Zoom, especially welcome you this morning. I thank God for each and every one of you. I want to take this opportunity as well to wish every mother that is able to hear my voice this morning a very happy Mother's Day today. May the Lord bless you today and keep you. And in spite of all that is happening around you, that you enjoy your day today. Amen. Today is a day of rejoicing. Let us rejoice and be glad. We have life this morning. And the word of God tells us, you know, everything that have breath. Praise the Lord. So this morning we can give him some praise. We can give him honor and we can give him glory this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just give ourselves a round of applause this morning. Hallelujah. 
just give ourselves a round of applause. We are here this morning praising the Lord. God is good. He is still on the throne. He is taking care of his own this morning. So let us worship him in spirit and in truth. Praise the Lord. This morning, I want to share with you from the word of God. And I have a message that I've prepared for mothers, but I trust by the grace of God that the fathers will be blessed as well, that the children will be blessed. And each and every one who hear this message will be blessed and challenged by the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want us to look into the book of Exodus this morning. So we are looking at Exodus chapter two. Father, I thank you this morning for being so good to us, so merciful. I give you praise, hallelujah. There is no God like you. I bless you today. I thank you. And God, even as I share your words this morning, cause it, oh God, to minister to the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're looking at Exodus chapter two. And we're going to do a bit of reading. So we'll be reading from verse 1 all the way to verse 10. And it says, And there went a man out of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bush rocks and dubbed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags of the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to wit what will be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river and her maidens walk along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she went, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew woman, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. Verse 10, and the child grew. And she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses. And she said, because I drew him out of the water. Praise the Lord. I want to choose for a theme this morning, leaving a legacy. Hallelujah. How many of us believe as God's people, we can leave a legacy? Something that, you know, generations that have gone before us, and actually this is the definition, that you can leave behind something, you know, that is worthwhile, something that is going to be beneficial in this life. You know, most people have heard about Moses, even before you ever probably read the Bible or anything you would have heard about Moses. He is one of the most familiar names in the Bible. In fact, his name is referred to more than 800 times in the scripture. His mother left an incredible legacy, hallelujah. But as most moms, she doesn't get a lot of recognition or appreciation. How many of us could attest to that this morning? Her name is only mentioned twice in the scripture. And her name 
is Joshi Bed. I think it's a lovely name. Now, Moses was not an only child. She had Aaron and Miriam. But Moses was born in a very difficult time. And it was difficult all along for the children of Israel. For one, they were in bondage. And secondly, they were oppressed. And thirdly, when the, the Egyptians saw how much they multiplied and how they grew strong in the land, they decided to stop that growth. And what they did was they wanted, they not only wanted to, but they kill all the males that were born. The Pharaoh instructed the midwives. He said, when you go to deliver these women, if it's a boy, kill him. And if it's a girl, save her. But the scripture said that the midwives, they feared God. And when Pharaoh realized that the, 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 the children of Israel continued to grow, they said, listen, you have not been obedient to us. We told you to kill these people, but you did not. And the word of God tells us that they said that the Hebrew women, they are lively. That when we reach there to deliver the baby, the baby is already born. So we know for a fact that there was some slaughtering taking place in Egypt and the children of Israel were there. According to the word of God, they spent 430 years there. During that time, you would understand that people were born there. You had all like Miriam and all of that, they were born in Egypt. They were born in captivity. They didn't know what it was to be free. But one of the things they did is that their forefathers carry their religion with them, carry their tradition with them so that they were able to pass it on. They left a legacy for them. And according to the scriptures, you would notice that even in bondage, they had a desire to serve the true and living God. But I want to focus a little bit on Joshibed because this woman did some things that were unique and it is a good example for all of us as mothers today. We can see these examples, we can learn from it. And even the fathers can see these examples as well. According to the word of God, the scripture said that the woman hid the child for three months. First of all, she saw it was a goodly child. I want us to know this morning, as a mother, as a parent, you must see your child as a goodly child. You must see your child as a child that God had have a purpose for. If you begin to think that your children have no purpose in this life, you will not take care of them the way you ought to. You will not love them the way you ought to. But she saw that he was a goodly child. I wish to God that some people in this society will begin to see children, you know, as goodly souls, begin to see them as some children and humans being that is worthwhile saving and keeping. The scripture tells us that she hid him for three months. I want you to understand in this society that we live in, it is necessary to hide our children. We are privileged at some time to even have them for more than three months. 
we are able to save them. We are able to help them. I want to call on mothers today, not just to nurse them with the breasts, but to nurse them with love and neuter these children because this is a time when things are difficult as it was in Egypt. Now, I want us to understand this morning that Egypt represents the world. Pharaoh represents the enemy. We are born in this world. It is difficult in this world and it is becoming more difficult so that you and I must rise to the challenge this morning. We must do all that is in our power to save our children, to hide them. There are a lot of things that they need to be hidden from because Pharaoh, which is the God of this world, wants to destroy them. It is our responsibility to hide them. Sometimes we have to hide them from the internet, hide them from Facebook, hide them from the neighbor, hide them from different people, hide them from taxi drivers. We have to hide our children because this is a time where the enemy is out to destroy. Hallelujah. The word of God said that he came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I want to thank God this morning that Jesus came, that we would have life and have it more abundantly this morning. You and I must work with God. We must help this morning in spite of the COVID, in spite of what is happening. Do not ignore your children. Don't leave them to fend for themselves. They cannot fend for themselves. The scripture said that Moses' mother hid him for three months until she couldn't hide him again. You and I have an opportunity to hide our children until we can't hide them again. We have this great privilege that God has given to us. The next thing we notice about Moses' mother is that she ensured that he was protected and preserved. So we notice here, the scripture said, when she wanted, she couldn't keep him any longer, but she ensured that he was safe. She made something for him that was waterproof that he wouldn't drown. I want us to know brethren and mothers and fathers, we need to provide certain things that our children will not drown in this life. There's a lot going on that children can drown in it. But she preserved her son, protected him. She had someone watching over him. The scripture tells us that she had her little daughter watch out for him. I want you to understand this morning that God is watching out for us. We must stand guard. We must not allow the enemy to destroy us. There are certain things sometimes in situation that we cannot change. But what we do know is we have a responsibility as God's people to protect and to preserve as much as life in our power. She did not allow the threats of the king to cause her to let her son go. Sometimes the world is threatening you. They are seeing things that are happening every day. But I want to say to you, hold on to your child as long as it's possible. Preserve them, protect them, teach them. Pass on your good training, pass on the heritage, the things that you have been taught. I want to know, I want you to know this morning that as a society, we have failed to pass on some of the goodly things that have been invested in us. We fail to pass on the teachings. We fail to pass on the training. We fail to pass on a lot of things. And because of that, our children are dying. But I want us to understand this morning that God 
has a plan for our children, not that they will die, but that they would live. And we must be the ones to provide an environment of safety that they are able to live. Hallelujah. The scripture tells us that when the child, she sent the child off on the river, I want you to know that there is a river of life that you and I cannot keep our children from. But if we protect them, they can sail on the river of life. We need to teach them, train them, care for them. Do not get too busy. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things that this COVID has done, it has caused some of us to slow down. We have been so busy. Take this opportunity now and slow down as you slow down. Look at some of the things that you have ignored. Look at some of the things that you didn't have time for. Don't sit back home and become bored and restless and depressed. Begin to see the things that can be done, how best you can improve it. This woman, in spite of her limitation, because she was in bondage and in all the bondage, she preserved her child. The scripture tells us that Pharaoh's daughter took the child and Miriam was there to said, do you want a maid to take care of the baby? And here it is, the mother was available. I want to ask you mothers today, are you available this morning? Are we making ourselves available? I want us to understand that the time she spent with this child, she invested. This was not just a time, you know, to just play with the baby or anything, but this was a time that she was able to teach him. There is a period of time in a child's life when they are easier to teach. She had the better time. She had the time when the child, when the, 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 the brain was, was, was young and she was able to put things in it and be able to put a, make a foundation for this child, something that this child will have for the rest of his life. She didn't only spend time, you know, sometimes all we could do is spend time kissing the baby toes. But after the baby grow old and you don't find the toes kissable anymore, you must invest in certain things that is going to help him. The scripture tells us that she kept him. He didn't, the word of God didn't say how long. But I know it was a period of time sufficient for her to pass on her faith, for her to instruct him about the word of God. It was a good time if she had to sing for him, whatever she did, she did it. But I want you to know also that it was done with a certain amount of restraint. Why? Because remember, she was a Hebrew slave. She couldn't allow them to know all that she had been teaching this child. But God bless her and God work it out for her. When we read in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, and verse 24 and 25, it talks about when Moses was come to age. Hallelujah. He was able to make a choice. Now, if we teach our children the right thing, they are able to make wise choices. But if we have not taught them, they can't choose. They don't know what to choose, you see? But the word of God tells us in Hebrews 11 that Moses, he chose. This, it said here in verse, in verse 24, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, 
when he was come to be a certain age, that he was able to make good decision, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Why? Because she had already allowed him to know that he was a child of God. He was a Hebrew. So he knew that he had to decide whether he wanted to be a Hebrew or he wanted to be an Egyptian. The scripture also said, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God so that he knew that the Hebrews were the people of God. And he wanted to align himself with the people of God. He said, then to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. He knew that sin, the pleasures of sin was seasonal. It doesn't last. I want to talk to some mothers today who are worried, who are perplexed by their children. I want you to look at Moses. Moses' mother spent time teaching him. If you have spent time teaching your son, teaching your daughter, when they come to age and they are faced with decision, I want you to understand that the God we serve is greater than Pharaoh. God is able to take all that you invested in this child's life and cause him or her to make right decision. Moses realized the pleasure of sin is for a season. Your child will realize that one of these days, that the pleasures of sin is for a season. It is not a permanent thing. You will only enjoy it temporarily. And the scriptures say he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. He aligned himself with the people of God. I want you to know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I want you to understand this morning, women of God, that the influence that you have have by the help of God, by the spirit of God is greater than the influence in the world. Hold on to your faith, mothers. Don't let go. Do what you're supposed to do. No matter who's sinking in society, what is happening, God has placed something in you that could make a difference. Embrace it this morning. Embrace it this morning, the opportunity that we have. You see, sometimes we lose the opportunity that we have. If you get too busy at all with all other stuff and you ignore the children, the time will come when you're ready and you have the time to teach them, it might be too late. But mm -hmm. Moses' mother, she spent three months, three months with this baby, nursing the baby, caring for the baby, ensuring that Moses was all right. She went into Pharaoh's house and took care of him inside Pharaoh's house. She did not adapt herself to the Egyptian's lifestyle. She did not surrender to the God of the Egyptians, but rather she maintained her integrity. And I want you to understand, it took 40 years, 40 years before this change come about. Mother, some of you are crying. You are unhappy today. It took 40 years for Moses to choose. Maybe your child will choose. Give him some time. Let him come to the realization that the pleasures of sin is for a season. They would come to that understanding for themselves. 
they would look and see what is happening. You would look and you would understand that even you will think about the benefits of serving God. And if you invested in your child, the benefits of serving God. You teach them how important it is to love God. You teach them the peace of God. You be a good example. You will see the results. The scripture tells us in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter seven, you know, when Peter, sorry, when Stephen began to preach the word of God, we all can remember that Stephen was martyred. He was martyred for preaching the word of God. But when he preached, he talked, and this man was able to give you a whole synopsis from the beginning since God called Abraham, bring it right down to the children of Israel and brought it to Moses and went all the way to Jesus. He was able to go through all the lineage and be able to see and to cause the people to see. The scripture said when they heard it, there are some people who cannot deal with truth. We all know that. They can't deal with truth. And they would want to kill you for the truth. John the Baptist was beheaded for the truth. The scripture tells us in Acts chapter 20, in Acts chapter 7, sorry, and verse 23, he said, and when he was full 40 years old, it came on into his heart. Brethren, uh, you put something there, and as it is there, it will come into the heart. It will begin to make root. Do not throw up your hands in the air this morning, mothers. Don't get fed up. Don't get discouraged. Don't walk out on the child. Don't see society kill the child. Don't get disenchanted. Don't go and get an abortion today. Understand that this woman had an opportunity to kill her child. Think about if this child was dead, God would have had to look for someone else to deliver the children of Israel. Your son, your daughter have a calling on their life. God didn't just bring them here by chance. They didn't come here by chance. But they have a a purpose. God have a purpose. I want to say to the viewing and listening audience that God have a purpose for all of us. You are not here. God is not idle and purposeless. When you came here, God told Jeremiah, he said, listen, I know you from since before you was in your mother's womb. I know you. I know you a long time before you're even born. I want to say to you this morning that God knows you. He knows where you are. He sees your situation. He has put people in place to help you. That's why God give children parents. The only child that I know who came into the world without parents the only individual I know was Adam and Eve. And after them, every human being had parents. And there is a purpose for that. If God wanted to do the thing for himself, he would have done it for himself. But he has placed us as humans to nurture our children, to train them, to teach them, to minister to them, to be an example to them. The scripture tells us even in the Old Testament, when he looked at the people and he said, you know, when Seth came, he said, then men begin to call upon the name of the Lord. God was looking for godly people. God still wants a godly people today. God have no pleasure in sin. He has no delight in sin. Some people would have rather 
to remain like Pharaoh's daughter and to reign and to rule in wickedness. But Moses chose, he said, rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Why? Because he knew his mother taught him. I want you also to understand the fact that this woman, Moses' mother, she didn't have just one child, but she had, according to the scripture, she had three children. And having three children in that time could have been difficult. It is work and more work. You have limitations. You upset. You oppress. You can become frustrated. Am I talking to any mother this morning that you can get frustrated in this time? You have a job. You have different rigors in life. You have to be probably a wife, a mother, or you are a single parent. There is a lot going on. But Zoshibed, what she did, she was able to teach her children in spite of. I want us to know this morning that we must set priorities. We need to set priorities. You would have read in the scripture that Aaron, when God was sending out Moses, and Moses said he couldn't speak. He was not a man of eloquent speech. God told him, he said, who made your mouth? Huh? Nevertheless, when Moses continued to say, God, I really can't do it. And you know how many of us, how we could behave. God wants us to do something. And we said, God, I can't do that. Now I'm afraid. I can't think. I'm embarrassed. Or oh, we have a lot of excuses. Right? But... God told him, he said, I will send Aaron with you. Now, Aaron was his brother. Aaron was his older brother. And the scripture said that God said, Aaron speaks well. It meant he was taught. And having teachings, he was able to speak well. Not only so, but Aaron was in a place of preparedness so that when God wanted the first high priest, Aaron became the first high priest. Why? Because he was prepared because he was in that place where they, they, they instructed him he was able when even when we look at Miriam, we see Miriam. Miriam was the first song leader that I could talk about in the scriptures. The scriptures say when they came out of Egypt, Miriam brought out her timbrel. When last, I remember I used to have a timbrel in the house. And in, in, in when we were having family worship. We would use the timbrel. These things, it seems to have gone out. We no longer bring out timbrel anymore. We have replaced it with so many different things. But Miriam was versed with her timbrel that she was able to whip it out and begin to beat that timbrel all the way in the wilderness. She made music. She caused the woman of that time and the other people in the journey who were filled with fear. She began to give them hope. She caused them to rejoice. She caused them to sing. I want to talk to some women this morning that God has invested in you and you could visit somebody not in the home, maybe on Zoom, call them on the phone, say something to them, maybe bring out your timbrel, whip it out for them today. Today is Mother's Day. A lot of mothers might be feeling frustrated. There are some mothers who may have lost their children or lost their mother. They are depressed. But you 
could be this morning like Moses' mother. As we going through this time, you could change the whole environment. You could charge it with praises and honor. You could begin to sing positively. It's time we begin to know what we can do. I want to encourage all our mothers this morning. Don't walk with your head down. Yes, this is difficult time, but we are well able to overcome. Yes, it is dangerous times. We know that. Yes, I know that death seems to be all around us, but whilst there is life, there is hope. Moses' mother wasn't sure if she would have lived because doing all of that, if this whole thing came out, she could have died. They could have put her to death. But in spite of that, she did what she knew God wanted her to do. I don't know how much the husband helped, where he helped. There was no mention of that. But what I do know this morning is that Moses' mother left a legacy for him. 40 years he was. Maybe you're quarreling with your children, they're just 30, they're 40, whatever time. And if you look at the different phases in Moses' life, he spent 40 years in Pharaoh's court. When he made that decision to come out, he still had to wonder. He wasn't even quite ready yet. Maybe your children coming out, but they're not quite ready yet. You're not seeing what is happening. You don't understand what is happening. There was a period in Moses' life when his mother didn't know what is going on with him. She didn't know what was going on. At 40 years, he left. He just left Egypt. She had no contact with him. She didn't know what was going on. And maybe mother, you're worrying and you're worrying unnecessarily. Why is you worrying about your child? And they might be in the wilderness now. God is dealing with them in the wilderness. We must trust God for them, whether they're in Pharaoh's court, whether they're in our homes, whether they're in the wilderness, we must understand that God is able wherever they are. You do what you're supposed to do. Say what you're supposed to say. Behave the way you ought to behave and allow God to work. We can't change our children. I want you to know that today. Maybe you're sighing and you're crying. Today's Mother's Day. Maybe your son in prison. You don't know what to do. You're so sad. He can't even contact you. All right? I want to give you a word this morning to trust God in this situation. Maybe you didn't have the opportunity to invest in him. Trust God still even now. You can tell God, God, I didn't do all that I'm supposed to do, but I want you to help me today. I want you to be merciful to me. Be merciful to my son today. Help him on this water of life. Maybe I didn't set him out right in this water of life. The current swept him away. I didn't put anybody to watch over his soul. This, I want you to know that there are people who can watch over your children's soul. Let them know that you need somebody to watch over their soul. And Moses was there in the river. She ensured that she didn't put him in his swift running current. You see, if we don't make choices sometimes for our children, they make wrong choices, right? If Moses had to do that, he was too young to make any decision. But when he came to age, because he was well instructed, he was able to make decision and say, I do not want to be the son of Pharaoh's daughter. I want to be a Hebrew. He chose that this morning. You could choose. Maybe even a young person might be listening to me here this morning. You choose the right thing. Don't choose to, to, 
to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. The pleasures of sin is for a season, which mean it is temporary. It is not going to last. If you have a high this morning, it is not going to last. You have to look for another fix this morning. Are you hearing me? If you are drunk this morning and you're looking as you're going to sober up, and when you sober up, in order to forget whatever you want, whatever was your reason, you have to take another one. It is for a season. If you're a dancer, whatever you are, an entertainer, it is for a season. The time will come and the season will be over. And what do you have left? Nothing. But if you choose to be with God, he said, I rather suffer affliction with the people of God. Why did he call it affliction? Because he knew that his brethren was in in slavery. He knew that his brethren was in bondage. He understand that this morning. I want you to understand that, that without God, we are all in bondage. It is Jesus that is able to set you free this morning. And the word of God tells us who the son set free is free indeed. Your bondage might be different to mine, but without God, we are all in bondage. We are tied to something. We become a slave to something. We stress out because of something, but because Moses had the understanding. He couldn't set the people free. He didn't know how to be set free, but he left. I want you to know today that you can walk out of your situation today. Walk out of it. Maybe you're in some kind of situation. The, 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 the whole relationship is toxic. Some people are in some very toxic relationship. And they dare just because they don't know what to do. Moses walked out. He didn't leave with a wagon full of clothes and raiment and this and jewel. He didn't go with that. He just left. I want you to understand this morning that you can walk out of your situation today. And when you walk out of that situation, God is able to help you. Moses spent 40 years in the desert mining sheep. You see, sometimes God has to bring us to a place where we have to learn to be constructive. Sometimes people waste the time. In, 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 in Pharaoh's court, you know, they taught him all right. He was taught, but he was taught. What was he taught? He was taught, the scriptures say in verse 22, and Moses was learned in what? In all wisdom of the Egyptian and was mighty in words and in deeds. What was he taught? All the Egyptian history, the culture, the science. And sometimes we have children today that all they know is that this science, geography, this and that and the other. And they don't know how to be real worthwhile men and women of God. That's why they mess up. Some of them with all the education, they are not even employable. They can't survive. They don't have survival skills. Moses had to learn survival skills this morning. I want to encourage you, teach your children survival skills in spite of all the education. Teach them how to survive. Teach them how to cook a pot. Are you understand what I'm saying? Teach them how to cook, how to prepare a meal. Teach them how to be able to take care of themselves. Some people can't even take care of themselves. And I want to let you know, if you cannot take care of yourself, you cannot take care of anybody else. It's very clear. So he was taught all right, but in spite of all that he was taught, when he met with God, he said, I can't even speak. Hmm? 
There are some people well taught in the natural life. But if you put them to do what I'm doing here, they can't speak. Because this is a whole different thing, right? So he spent 40 years again in the wilderness. While he was there for these 40 years, he had to take care of sheep. He had a father-in-law, Jethro, who was taking care of sheep. He married uh, the, her daughter, his daughter, sorry. And he joined in the thing, taking care of sheep. He didn't know anything about that. In Egypt, he didn't take care of sheep. So God had to bring him to that place where he learned because he was about to lead millions of people in the wilderness. And these people behave like sheep, behave dumb, wayward like sheep. That's why Isaiah said, all we like sheep have gone astray. Every man to his own way. Sheep wayward. Sheep could behave dumb. So he got used to taking care of sheep so that he was able, when the time came, he had the patience and what it took to take care of people. And mommy, why you might be worrying about your son, worrying about your daughter, you ain't seen them. You know what they're going through and they're going through a rough time. Maybe God is teaching them so that they can be useful for his kingdom. Maybe they're in some hard place and they're facing hardness. Come out, out, uh, 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 out of Pharaoh's court. Out of Pharaoh's court and into hardness. And you might be saying, homie, I don't know. That boy only looking for things. This girl only looking. At one time, she had a nice little place. She had a nice little job, you know. And she was doing really well. You know, she really educated and she was doing well. And all of a sudden, the girl leave. And look how she did. And she doing a kind of menial job. Maybe God preparing them to lead. You don't know. Because all the years, they didn't understand, they didn't know. Trust God. Trust your investment. Trust your prayer. Trust your lifestyle. You have been doing it. Continue to trust. The scriptures say, after you have done all to stand. I want to encourage you to stand this morning. You have done all. It's nothing you could do again. The child has come to age. Isn't much you could do, but you now could stay back, stand back and say, God, I have done all. I have nursed him. I have hid him. I tried to preserve him. I protected his life. I took care of him. I taught him. I did all that I could have done. I took him to Sunday school. I did everything. I taught the others. They know how to pray. They know how to sing. Notice that she didn't have that problem with Miriam. And she didn't have that problem with Aaron. And you know, sometimes we like to um, compare our children. You know, I never had problem with Aaron. And I never had problem with Miriam. But they probably they didn't born in that particular time that Moses was born in. Moses was born in a time where they're killing people. When they were born, they were not killing them. They had an opportunity to grow. Moses was born in a different time. You are different parents. Listen, let me tell you something, mom. Every child, you may have seven children, as I did, and you would have been, your seven children, different mothers. And I want to make that clear to you. How oh, they could be different mother? When I had my first child, I was different. What I knew now, I didn't know then, right? I was very young. When I had my second child, I wasn't the same mother with the first child. 
They were always spoiling and not teaching. And I didn't know that the second one came and the second one had got a different treatment. And the third one had a different mother. And the fourth one and the last one had a different mother because I went through the mill by that time. I learned things sometimes the hard way. I have a different understanding. I have a different perception. So the seven children, seven different mothers and understand that you are not the same person. If you had to have another child today, you would have been different from when you had the first one, from when you had Aaron and when you had Miriam, when Moses came along, you would have been different. And if you had one after Moses, you would have been different again. Why? Because situation caused you to change. Circumstances change you. Experience change you. Lifestyle change you. And you are still in the process of change. The person you were, 20 years ago, you are not the same person today. And I want you to know that God is doing a work on you. Continue to work with him. Allow him to work on you. You can fix the past. You can change what has gone before. Be thankful that you have Moses. Be thankful that Aaron ended up being the priest without no problem. Miriam being a song leader as she come out there, but Moses was different. I want you to understand, you must be able to love the different child, be able to be patient with the different child. You may have lost connection. I don't know where to find him. It's a long time. Trust God with him in the wilderness. One of these days you will see him. And when you see him, God is going to give you the opportunity God gave Miriam, sorry, Moses' mother the opportunity to be able to follow Moses. You don't know what God is doing. David pray. He said he be leaving to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God afforded David to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God could cause you to see the change. God could cause you to see Moses again, be able to follow him. And you could be able to say, I thank God for this child. I thank God that I didn't allow them to kill him. I thank God that I preserve him. Even when things get difficult, I thank God I protected him. Why? Because now I could see that my labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your hand and praise God this morning. God is talking to some people this morning. Lift up your hand and give God praise. He is worthy of all our praises this morning. I know this is COVID time. People are going through a difficult time, but do not let this time cause you to let go of your children. Don't just let them go in the waters of life and let them fend for themselves. It is a difficult time. Maybe you can't keep them as you used to. Maybe you want to give up the child. I can't keep him. Look, at him working again and this and that. And I can't do this and I can't do that. Don't let go your child. Maybe you get pregnant and it's this COVID time and you're thinking about having an abortion. Don't do it. Don't do it. You can be killing a great leader. Are you understanding what I'm saying this morning? You don't know what God has placed in your loins. The scriptures say that he was a Levite. Understand who you are. You are a Levite. She didn't even know at that time that the Levite was going to be of the priesthood. She didn't know that. But one thing she knew, she saw he was a goodly child. Begin to see your children as goodly children, hard or soft, whatever it is, stick with them and leave a legacy for them. It might be hard in this time. You, you have a lot of competition. You're competing with Facebook. You're competing with people out there. You're competing with all kinds of stuff. 
stick your gun, stay there and leave a legacy for your child. God is able to take them through every stage and every age and to be able to keep you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I want to pray this morning. And I want to pray for some mothers this morning. But I want to pray for fathers as well. I don't know what could happen between now and Father's Day. And if fathers are logged in, I don't want to leave you out because you have a responsibility as well to hold on to your children. Don't let them go to the neighbor. Gone are the days. I remember the days when we used to say that um, the, a village just grew up a child. I cannot be in total agreement with that now. That used to happen. Now you have to hide your child from the village. This is where it is. You had to hide your child from the village now. I remember as a child, daddy and they used to leave me home and they would tell the neighbor, neighbor, try I am going out and get that home by herself. Try I. Now you're afraid to tell them to throw any eye because they might be eyeing the wrong thing and eyeing the, they have a bad motive, wrong motive. So you're not you afraid to let them know that you're leaving your child. This is how it is now. You're afraid, you're afraid, you're afraid of relatives. Listen, I am not trying to be, to be funny here or to be stupid, I know. This is the facts of life. Listen to the amount of abuse there is out there. Brother abusing brother. That's what it is. Father abusing child. It is a difficult time. Hide your child. I wonder if you're understanding what I'm saying this morning. Hide them. Hide them as long as you can. Take away the, 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 the different things they have, some of the laptop and the tablet and anything. When class is over, take it from them, lock it down. They will wake up in the night and you don't know what they're watching. You will lose your child, hide them. There's not time for no children to go and sleep over. They don't want to sleep over nowhere. They have their bed home, their room home, whatever they have. If they don't even have a bed and they're sleeping on the floor, you watch them on the floor, lie down on the floor with them and sleep with them and watch them, hide them. This is a difficult time. Father, I want to tell you thanks this morning for your word. I thank you, God for every listener today, for every viewer. Father, you know how to transform these words and cause it to be so powerful that it will minister to the hearts of the hearer. I pray today for a mother that is going through a difficult period, a mother that is reeling under this. Maybe she doesn't have a job. She doesn't have a husband. She doesn't have anybody to take care of her. Lord, and she have children. And Lord, she's becoming desperate. I pray in the name of Jesus that you are going to minister today, that you are going to send help. Help, Lord. I remember that you sent help for Moses. Even though she was Pharaoh's daughter, you sent help to preserve his life. Send help to that mother today. Encourage her heart. Help her to know that you have given her what it takes to be strong and to be able to endure. God, I understand that you're a mother. We are all mothers for life. We never stop being a mother. Even grandmothers, we continue to be mothers. Lord, help today. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will touch the fathers as well. Lord, because we, without these fathers, we cannot be mothers. I pray in the name of Jesus that these men will rise to the challenge. God, that they will take this responsibility seriously, that they will join, oh God, with the mother to grow this child. 
have mercy today. Bring deliverance for those that not don't they are not saved and they don't know you. Save them. Bring deliverance today. Bring healing. Be merciful today. God, we need mercy in this time. Lord, as we look around us, people are dying. Lord, every day people are dying. Every day we have triple figures, oh God, of COVID victims. Father, be merciful. Be merciful to us. Help our children. Save them. Touch them. God, use even this difficult time for them to become saved, for them to make right choices. Holy Father, breathe upon us today. Lord, I commit them into your hands. And I want to give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, each and every one of you. For those of you who logged in late, I want to take this opportunity again to wish you a very happy Mother's Day today. Hallelujah. Maybe you didn't receive a gift, but you have the best gift, the gift of life. In this time, you are alive, according to our prime minister. If we do what we are supposed to do, we'll be able to see more Mother's Day. But if we try to return to the way we used to behave on Mother's Day, we could end up that this one be the last one. Stay safe, follow instruction, behave ourselves. Let us behave ourselves. Are you with me this morning? And have a wonderful day today. Whatever God has blessed you with, bless it and eat it. Thank God for your children. You have a phone, give them a call. Mommy are coming over. Not today, darling. Thanks so much for calling. Have a wonderful day. I do appreciate you and I love you. Are you with me this morning? In the name of Jesus. So God bless you today. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And let us celebrate. Think about Moses' mom this morning. Maybe you, the Holy Spirit may tell you some things that I didn't even share with you. And as he revealed that to you, know that if she could have done it, you could do it too. If this time is difficult, that time was difficult as well. And God was able to bring her through. Amen? Amen. Amen. So God Amen. bless you. Let me see, let me see you there. Let, let's give, give God a wave. Let me see you waving your hands to the Lord. On, oh, come on, come on. Unmute your mic. Put on, put on your, your, your video. And let me see you. Let me know that you are here. Let me hear you this morning. And let's give God some praise together. Hallelujah. 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 For God to do that, do hard for God to do. Think about hard thing. It's nothing too hard. So God bless you again. Have a wonderful day today. All you on Facebook, enjoy your day. I want to greet all of you that are out there. I want you to remember Maria, who is in New York. A good day to you. Happy Mother's Day to you, Marie. I want to greet Liz and Michael out there. Ah, I am seeing Marie. Oh, good to see you, baby. God bless you. Thanks for joining in. Wonderful. Ah, God bless you. All right. And all the other brethren, some of them I can't even remember the name now. It just suddenly gone out of my head. Mr. Michael out there. And all the other brethren. 
um, when the shaman and and um, and Malcolm they are out there in the states as well. I think in um is it in somewhere out there? They are out there. Happy God now. bless Mommy. you. Enjoy your day today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right, Sister Pearl. Sister Pearl is always with us. Sister Pearl, have a happy Mother's Day today. Enjoy your day today. God bless you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. To all the brethren, God bless you. God bless you. Sister Corinne, I'm seeing you. Have a wonderful day today. All the brethren, love you, brethren. Ah, love you, love you. Love you, brethren. I embrace you in the name of Jesus. Love you, love you. I love you, love you brethren. Love you. Let me embrace you, man, by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love you. All of you, God, listening from wherever you are, wherever you are, God bless you this morning. Mikey's sister and all these brethren who log in here. Love you, love you, love you. Enjoy your day today. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Yes, Sister Bertolin and Brother Aaron. Bless you. God bless you. Bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Jabal, thanks for joining in again. God bless you. All the brethren. Some of you, I can't mention all of your names, and I don't want to forget. I'm already forgetting some names. I don't want to continue to forget. And you say, hey, you know, Pastor didn't call me. No God word. bless you. Yeah. Pastor, happy Mother's Day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Evelyn. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Same to you. Enjoy your day today. Right. Sister Jillian, Sister Lovey. All who I could see. <laughs> Bless them. Happy Mother's Day to you too, Sister Evelyn. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Happy Mother's Day, Sister Jillian. Happy Mother's Day to you, Sister Kenny. Happy Mother's Day, Pastor. Thank you. Thank happy you. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Happy Thank, you. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Special Mother's Day greeting. See you, Pastor. Love you. Love you too, baby. Have a good day. Thank Hallelujah. You. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Happy Mother's Day to my pastor. Thank happy you. Mother's day. Happy Mother's Day, mother's day to you as you well. To all the women of the New Testament. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Brother Jabal. Brother Jabal, just wish all the women happy yeah. Mother's Day. Thank you, Brother Jabal. It's a joy. You look lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Bless you. It to you. Thanks. Thanks for joining. 